Welcome to lecture three. In this lecture, we will talk about determinants and Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is just another technique for solving systems of linear equations. And uh, Kramer's rule employs something called determinants, so we want to learn, first of all, what a determinant is. Uh, let's suppose that we had a matrix. You, you will recall that in an earlier lecture we saw how a system of equations could be expressed as a matrix equation. So we're, in, we're interested in matrices and let's suppose that we have the following matrix. Let's just keep this real simple right now. A two by two matrix. One, two, three, four. Now, <clears throat> the determinant of A is uh, simply uh, the number that we get when we multiply across this diagonal and then subtract from that <clears throat> what we get when we uh, multiply across this diagonal. So, in other words, it is 1 times 4 minus 3 times 2 or 4 minus 6 and that would be negative 2. There's not much simpler than calculating the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. If we look at a, a general case where maybe um, uh, we have we call it B and let's say it's alpha, beta, delta and gamma then the determinant of B will be alpha gamma minus beta delta. So that's all there is to calculating the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now let's think about a um, 3 by 3 matrix. Let's say maybe we'll just make up an example. We'll say 1 2, uh, 3, um, negative 1, 0, 2, and maybe uh, 1, 3, 0 as an example. So how do we calculate the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix? That's our question now. And uh, I want to show you a couple of techniques. Um, oh, now, perhaps in high school you have seen um, a technique like this. You'll go 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 0. You'll write down the numbers in the original matrix and then you'll repeat the first two columns. So you would have 1, negative 1, 1, and 2, 0, 3. And then you go, you multiply these numbers together, and these numbers together, and these numbers together, and add those three products you get, and then subtract from that the what you get when you add up these, uh, the product of these three, and the product of these three, and the product of these three. Now let's just see what that would be in this case. So when we look at this um, first diagonal, we have 1 times 0 times 0, and of course that's 0. And then and now we're adding everything now. So plus 0, plus 2 times 2 times 1, and that would be uh, 4. And then 3 times negative 1 times 3 would be negative 9. So we have plus a negative 9. So again, here we've added up the product of these three to the product of those three to the product of those three. And now <coughs> we're going to subtract <coughs> uh, these three products. So we have, we're going to subtract 1 times 0 times 3. That's 0. So minus 0 and then minus 3 times 2 times 1, so that's minus 6. And then finally, minus 0 times negative 1 times 2, which is 0, so minus 0. 
And the answer that we will achieve here is 4 minus 9, that's negative 5, and negative 6 is negative 11. Now, <clears throat> that technique will work for a 3 by 3 uh, determinant, but it will not work for any higher order determinant. And so um, I would tend to want to discourage, let's say discourage this method. And instead, we want to try to learn a method that will be more general and will work for any case. Uh, we'll keep this answer of negative 11 in the back of our minds and, and, and check it uh, later. But um, we, as I say, let's, let's learn a more general method. This more general method is uh, frequently referred to as expanding by minors and uh, I'll just show you how it works with uh, the example C. So the first thing we do is we um, associate with our matrix what I refer to as a checkerboard pattern. It always has a plus it starts with a plus and then everything else just alternates from there. So we'd have plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus. So this is our checkerboard pattern that we would have for a 3x3 three three determinant. And of course you could do this with 2x2 two two or 4x4 four four or 5x5, five five, whatever you wanted to do. And now once you have this checkerboard pattern, then you go back to the determinant in question. So we have, uh, we want 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 0. And I'll put straight lines now to denote that we want to evaluate the determinant. And the way this will go, uh, the expanding by minors technique goes as follows. <clears throat> we can expand across any row or down any column. So for instance, let's just suppose that we expanded across the first row. Then the way that we, we do this would be the following. We look at the checkerboard pattern, we have a plus, and in the corresponding position we have a 1. So we would have plus 1, and then we multiply that by the determinant of what's left over when we take out the row and the column in which that one is situated. So if we take out this one here is in the first row and in the first column. So if we take out the first row and the first column, what's left over is zero, two, three, zero. Then the next uh, entry in the checkerboard pattern is minus. So we have minus and the corresponding number over here is 2, so we'd get minus 2. And we multiply that by the determinant of what's left over when we take out the first row and the second column. And so that would be negative 1, 2, 1, 0. Negative 1, 2, 1, 0. And then finally, uh, we have a plus in the uh, last entry here of the first row, so we'd have plus. The corresponding number over here is 3, so plus 3. And then we would have the determinant of what's left over when we take out the first row and the third column, which would be negative 1, 0, 1, 3. Negative 1, 0, 1, 3. And that would be um, how we could, uh, that's one way that we could evaluate this determinant. And let's see what that would give us. Okay, we would have one. Now, these two by two determinants, we've learned already how to do that. So this would be zero times zero minus three times two. So that'd be minus six. So we have one times negative six. And then we'll have negative two times the determinant of this, which would be negative 1 times 0 minus 1 times 2, so that's minus 2. 
and then finally we'd have plus three times the determinant of this uh, right here and we have negative one times three minus one times zero so negative three and so that turns out then to be one times negative six is negative six negative two times negative two would be plus four and three times negative three is negative nine and so this would end up giving us negative eleven and notice that that uh, agrees with the answer that we obtained up here using this special technique but again the expanding by minors technique <clears throat> will work for any uh, for before determinant of any dimensions two by two three by three four by four five by five whatever you wish whereas this technique uh, does not so that's why we uh, favor the expanding by minors technique now let me uh, make sure you understand here that we did not have to decide uh, on expanding across the first row we could have gone across any row or down any column and in fact actually the first row is not a very smart choice in this case you want to look for the row or the column that has the most zeros in it because of course if you have a zero then you don't even have to do the multiplication so what would have been smarter here would have been to have expanded across the second row or the third row or the second column or the third column so let's check and see how that would have gone so I'll just put a note here and say uh, across the first row but now we'll try it again one two three negative one zero two one three zero and I'll encourage you to do it first and then come back uh, we'll, this time we'll go uh, maybe down the second column so try that on your own and then when you think you have it then we'll look at it together okay so if we're going to um, evaluate this by going down the second column okay we look at our checkerboard pattern and the first uh, entry in the second column is negative so we have negative and then the corresponding number over here is 2 so we have negative 2 and we'll multiply that by the determinant of what is left over when we take out this column and this row and that would be negative 1 2 1 0 negative 1 2 1 0 now the um, the next entry uh, in our checkerboard pattern is plus so we have plus and the corresponding number over here is zero and so we don't even need to write down the determinant for this one uh, I'll just put maybe a squiggle because whatever it is once it gets multiplied by zero it'll give us zero so we don't have to worry about that one and in fact that's why it's convenient to choose rows or columns that have lots of zeros because it saves you some work then the final entry in the second column will be minus sign so minus the corresponding number is three so minus three and we multiply that by the determinant of what's left over when we take out the second column in the third row so that's one three negative one two one three negative one two and now let's see what this will give us okay then the first term becomes negative two and then this determinant we have negative one times zero is zero minus one times two so minus two and then uh, the last term here will give us minus three times one times two is two minus a negative three two minus a negative three is two, same as two plus three or five so we have uh, five here and so this will give us four negative two times negative two is four 
and negative 3 times 5 is minus 15 and so once again we are arriving at this answer negative 11 and in fact it doesn't matter how we do it uh, <clears throat> as long as we use the checkerboard pattern um, correctly uh, we can expand across any row or down any column and we will get the same answer so that's how we evaluate a determinant of a higher order system now there's one more thing I'd like to show you about this uh, before we move on so one final note about determinants in evaluating a determinant you can employ any of the three procedures allowed in Gaussian elimination. Now let's go back to the last lecture and recall what those were. These are the three procedures that were allowed in Gauss elimination. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. And then we'll go back to the present lecture. So there they are. Those are the three procedures. Uh, that we have in gas elimination and we can also use those when we're evaluating a determinant but there's a few other things we need to keep in mind uh, when we do so so what is it that we need to keep in mind well it's the following let's say however remember that if you use number one, if that is, if you interchange any two rows of the augmented matrix of the of the any two rows of the determinant, now this should read determinant. So let me say uh, uh, I'll cross that out and say determinant. So if you interchange any two rows this introduces a negative sign and then and I'll say however remember that if you use number two this multiplies the determinant by that number and uh, finally if you use procedure number three this has no effect on the determinant
So let me show you what I mean uh, by saying this. Okay, so we have already learned that one, two, three, negative one, zero, two, one, three, zero. We've already learned that that is equal to negative 11. We've seen it several times above. But let's say, you know, we've, we've already said that uh, the easiest thing to do when you were evaluating a determinant and using the expanding by minors technique, it's easiest to expand across a row or, across, or down a column that has a lot of zeros. And we already know from the Gaussian elimination technique how to introduce zeros into a row or column. So that's why we might want to use these, these procedures first to introduce more zeros into the determinant and then uh, um, try to evaluate it. So for instance, let's see how this would go. Um, if we were thinking about doing Gaussian elimination on this, then we would say, okay, we first want to eliminate the non-zero terms in the first column below the diagonal, and that's negative one and one. And it's very easy to eliminate those. We can eliminate this negative one simply by adding the first row to the second row. And we can eliminate this one by subtracting the first row from the third row. So let's try that and see what happens. So we would get one, two, three. Now, when we add the first row to the second row, this is an example of procedure number three. And we're told that, that using procedure number three has no effect on the determinant. So this should not change the value of the determinant at all. And let's see what will happen. If we add one, two, three to negative one, zero, two, we will get zero, two, five. And then when we subtract the first row from the third row, this is once again an example of procedure number three. And so again, the, by doing this, it should not affect the value of the determinant. So when we subtract the first row from the third row, we will get zero, one, negative three. Now, we can go ahead at this point if you wish, we could go ahead and now uh, expand down the first column. That'd be very convenient to do because there's two zeros in the first column. And so um, if we remember the checkerboard pattern here, we would just have a plus for the one. So plus one times the determinant of what's left over. When we um, take out this row and this column, so we would have two five one negative three two five one negative three and this would be two times negative three is negative six minus one times five negative six minus five is negative eleven times one so we have plus one times negative eleven which would be negative eleven and so you see that by um Using procedure number three a couple of times, we did not change the value of the determinant, and it made the final evaluation look how quick this was. So that would be something we could, um, this is just another technique we could use uh, in evaluating a determinant. Now, on the other hand, let's suppose that uh, when you had gotten to this, this second step here, um, let's just suppose that for some reason you had wanted to chain, interchange this, the uh, second row and the third row. So you could have written 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, negative 3, 0, 2, 5. We could, have, we could have said this, but since in going from here to here, since you've interchanged two rows, uh, that is an example of procedure number one and we're told that that introduces a negative sign and so to counteract that negative sign we must put in another negative sign of our own and now I claim that 
when we put in this negative sign, it will counteract the negative sign that would be introduced by interchanging those two rows. And therefore, I claim that this whole determinant with this negative sign now will have the same value as our original one. And let's check that and see. So we would get, we put here the negative sign from out front. And then we will have a plus one. That This plus comes from the checkerboard pattern. And the one is right up here. And then if we go, uh, the, if we multiply that by the determinant of what's left over when we take out the first row and the first column, we will have one, negative three, two, five. And so this will be negative because negative times positive times one is negative one. And we can just put negative. And then here, I'll, I'll go ahead and put negative one. And then in parentheses, we will have 5 minus a negative 6. And so this is negative 1 times 11 or negative 11. And still one more thing you could have done, if you wish. I mean, I'm, I'm just showing you different ways that you could evaluate this. And there's no one way that's right. There's just different ways you could do it. But suppose you had gotten down to this point right here, and um, instead of uh, instead of wanting to go ahead and evaluate, then there, there's uh, let's say that you wanted to take Gaussian elimination even a little pr uh, further, and so you wanted to get rid of this two here, and uh, let's say you wanted, uh, well, no, 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 I guess I guess I'll do it this way. well. Let me just actually make my point maybe in this following way. Okay, we know from up here, we know that 1, 2, 3, 0, 2, 5, 0, 1, negative 3. We know that that's equal to negative 11. But suppose that you wanted to... <clears throat> see what would ha happen if we used uh, procedure number two of Gauss elimination on this. What I mean is the following. If you were looking at, if you were thinking of this solely in terms of Gauss elimination and you were wanting to eliminate this one, now we've already seen that's not necessary, but just suppose you did want to eliminate it. Well, if you wanted to eliminate this one right here, you could do so by adding negative one half times the second row to the third row. But that negative one half, if we did that, that would introduce a fraction here. And we've already talked about not liking fractions. So another thing you might think about doing is the following. You might multiply the bottom row by 2. So 0, 2, 5, 0, 2, negative 6. Now the reason to do that to multiply the bottom row by 2 is that now you have a 2 here and a 2 there and so if you subtract the second row from the third row that will cancel that out and you don't get any fractions and this is perfectly legitimate however <clears throat> we have multiplied the second row by excuse me we've multiplied the third row by 2 and according to what we have up here multiplying any row by any non-zero number it multiplies the the whole determinant by that number so I'm saying that by multiplying the third row by 2, I have multiplied the entire determinant by 2. And if I've done that, then I want to balance that out. So what I need to do to avoid changing anything is if I multiply some row by 2, then I need to multiply on the outside by 1 over 2. And I claim that now that I've put that 1 over 2 out here, now... Uh, everything is, is unchanged. The value will still be negative 11. And we'll see if that's correct in a moment. Okay, so now that we've done that, we carry along our 1 half, but now we're ready to go ahead and uh, subtract the second row from the third row. So we get 1, 2, 3, 0, 2, 5. And when we subtract the second row from the third row, we get 0, 0, and negative 11. And now, uh, 
now we're certainly ready because we've uh, eliminated all the non-zero terms below the main diagonal. We're certainly ready to um, now evaluate the determinant very easily. So we'll have one half, and we could we could uh, notice we could um, evaluate down the first column. That has two zeros. We could also evaluate across the third row. Let's do that. Since this has two zeros, let's do that. So if we go across the third row, keeping in mind the checkerboard pattern, for the third row, the checkerboard pattern is plus, minus, plus. So we would have one half, and that's this one half right here. Then we'd have a plus from the checkerboard pattern. Then we get negative 11. And then we need to multiply that by the determinant of what's left over when we take out this row and this column. So we have 1, 2, 0, 2. And this will give us um, 1 half, or actually I guess we can combine things a little bit here. We have negative 11 over 2. The negative sign is right here. So negative 11 over 2. And here for the determinant, we have 1 times 2 minus 0 times 2. So this is minus 11 over 2 times 2, which is indeed minus 11. So this is a pretty thorough discussion of how you can evaluate determinants of arbitrary order. You can either, if you want to, you can use Gauss elimination to introduce more zeros into the determinant. But if you use Gauss elimination, you need to remember that... Uh, depending on which procedures you use, you may need to introduce uh, you may need to introduce negative signs or coefficients out front to make sure you undo any changes you might make. Or if you don't want to bother with the gas elimination, you could just go directly uh, from the very beginning and uh, expand by minors. But um, that's how you can. Uh, uh, evaluate determinants of arbitrary order. And so now, and you might have already been wondering, so what is that valuable for? And now we will discuss that. Uh, what it's valuable for is something called Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule <clears throat> is a, another technique for solving systems of equations and it involves a determinant. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's suppose, <clears throat> as a, a first very simple example, let's say maybe we had the system of equations x plus y is equal to 3 and uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to 11. This is just an example. <clears throat> so obviously this would be very simple to uh, solve by hand <clears throat> or to solve a Gauss elimination technique but still another way is to use uh, Kramer's rule and Kramer's rule says the following first of all we write this um, system of equations in matrix form we're already familiar with that idea and the way that we would write it would be this. And then uh, we're told that the solution to the system of equations will be this. X is equal to D sub X over D. And Y is equal to D sub Y over D where D is equal to the determinant of the system matrix 1, 1, 2, 3. Here's our system matrix right here. And D sub X is equal to the determinant of the what we would get if we have the system matrix but replace the first column by the right-hand side vector. 
Now here's the right hand side vector right here. And so we're going to use that to replace the first column when we want d sub x. So we would have 3, 11 for the first column, but then the second column, we go ahead and use the uh, second column of d, so 1, 3. And d sub y, since y is the second uh, unknown, and, and, and notice now it is important that you have the equations, have the variables in the same order in every equation. So you have your x's first, and then your y's. And therefore, <clears throat> uh, when you're calculating d sub x, you, you replace the first column of d. And when you're calculating d sub y, you replace the second column of d. But do remember to uh, write, it, for each equation, you want the unknowns to be in the same order. Okay, so d sub y then uh, is the system matrix, but with the second column replaced by 311. So we'll have 1, 2, and then 311. So let me make sure one more time that this is perfectly clear. D is the determinant of this system matrix. And then since X is the first unknown, we get D sub X by writing down the system matrix, but replacing the first column of the system matrix by the right-hand side. So we get 311. 311 and then 1 3 and since y is the second variable uh, we replace the second column of the system matrix with 311 so we get 1 2 for the first column of dy but for the second column we get 311 and now let's check all this out and see if it works okay well each one of these is a two by two determinant so it's very simple to evaluate uh, d is um, 1 times 3 is 3 minus 2 times 1 is 2 so 3 minus 2 is 1 d sub x will be 3 times 3 is 9 minus 11 so that's negative 2 and d sub y will be 1 times 11 is 11 minus 2 times 3 is 6 11 minus 6 is 5 d sub y is equal to 5 and therefore x is equal to d sub x over d and that will be negative 2 and y will be d sub y over d and that will be 5 and let's check and see if that's correct uh, negative 2 plus 5 is 3 so the first equation checks and negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 and 15 is indeed 11 and so that's how Kramer's rule works just that simple now uh, let's check it for a 3 by 3 problem and we'll go back to the problem we did uh, using gas elimination uh, in our last lecture. So here uh, is the system of equations we had last time and we used gas elimination. Now we will use Kramer's rule to see how that goes. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll say, now consider a system of three equations and three unknowns. And of course, up here, this was uh, two equations 
in two unknowns. Okay, now notice that each one of these equations has x is the first unknown, y is the second unknown, and z is the third un unknown. So since all the equations are in the right order, uh, you know, they're consistent, then we can go directly to work and uh, we see that D, that's the determinant of the system matrix, and that will be 1, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, 1, negative 1. D sub x will be, um, we're going to replace, since x is the first variable, we will replace the first column of the system matrix by the right hand side vector 632. So we'll have 632, and then the rest will be exactly like the system matrix. So 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 1. For d sub y, since y is the second variable, we will have the system matrix but but with the second column replaced so we get one two three six three two one one negative one and then finally d sub z that's the third variable so we replace the third column so we'll get one two three one negative 1, 1, and then 6, 3, 2. So we have to uh, find the values of these four 3 by 3 determinants, and once we've done that, then we can uh, determine very easily the values of x, y, and z. Now, um, Let's see here. Let me break for just one moment. Okay, so uh, we have a little bit of work to do, and uh, you've already seen how to evaluate a three by three determinant. In fact, we looked at that pretty extensively. So I would encourage you to stop the video at this point and try to go ahead and evaluate each one of these three by three determinants on your own and then come back and we'll do it all together and see if you have the right value for each one okay so let's see how this will go i'll start with d one 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 two negative one one three one negative one this is d and I'm going to use the method of uh, using gas elimination first. <clears throat> so if I add negative 2 times the first row to the second row, that does not change the value of the determinant. It doesn't require me to put any extra terms outside the determinant. And so if I add negative 2 times the first row to the second row, I'll get 0 here because negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 and 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and negative 1 is negative 3. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and 1 is negative 1. And then get rid of the 3 down here by adding negative 3 times the first row to the final row. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and 1 is negative 2. And finally, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and negative 1 is negative 4. And now uh, I'm ready to go ahead and expand uh, down the first column. And so I get plus from the checkerboard, and then 1, because this... Um, term in the upper left hand corner is 1 and then the determinant of what's left over when I take out the first row and the first column and that will be negative 3 negative 1 negative 2 negative 4 and so this will be 12 minus 2 and that's 10 so D is equal to 10 now let's look at D sub X we have 6 
three, two, one, negative one, 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 negative one. Okay. Um, in this case, I uh, will first, I want to be able to eliminate this 3 and this 2, and that will be easiest if I multiply the second row by 2 and the last row by 3. So when I multiply the second row by 2, that will give me 6, negative 2, 2. And when I multiply the last row by 3, I'll get 6, 3, negative 3. Now, since I've multiplied the second row by 2 and the last row by 3, I've multiplied the entire determinant by 6. And so if I don't want to change uh, anything, then I need to multiply by 1 sixth out front. Okay. Now uh, it's easy to go ahead and uh, eliminate the non-zero terms below the main diagonal in the first column. I'll simply add the negative of the first row to both the second row and the third row, and let's see what we get. So we'll carry over the 1 sixth, and then I have 6, 1, 1. And then when we add the negative of the first row to the second row, we get 0, negative 3, 1. And when we add the negative of the first row to the last row, we get 0, 2, negative 4. And so now to evaluate this, we have 1 sixth. And then we have a plus sign from the checkerboard pattern. We're going down the first column again. Then we have 6. And then the determinant of what's left over when we omit the first row and first column. So negative 3, 1, 2, negative 4. And so everything outside here, 1, 6 times a plus sign times 6 is just 1. So we're just left over. Uh, all we have is this determinant. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. Minus 2 times 1 is 2. 12 minus 2 is 10. Now let's look at d sub y. Okay, d sub y is 1, 6, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, negative 1. Uh, again, I'll go ahead and use gas elimination to eliminate the non-zero terms with other main diagonal in the first column. So we get 1, 6, 1, and then negative 2 times the first row added to the second row will give 0 here, and negative 9 there, and negative 1 here. And negative 3 times the first row added to the third row will give a 0 here. And uh, negative 18 and 2 is negative 16. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And negative 1 is negative 4. And now we're ready to expand down the first column. Again, plus sign from the checkerboard. And then a 1 because of this 1 right here. And then we get the determinant that's left over. So negative 9, negative 1, negative 16 negative 4 and this is simply going to be negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36 minus negative 16 times negative 1 is 16 so 36 minus 16 is 20 and finally D sub Z okay we have 1 2 3 1 negative 1 1 And 6, 3, 2. Once again, I'll use gas elimination technique. So 1, 1, 6. Negative 2 times the first row added to the second row will give 0. 
negative 3, negative 9, and negative 3 times the first row added to the third row will give 0, negative 2, negative 16, and so we get plus from the checkerboard, 1, and then negative 3, negative 9, negative 2, negative 16, and that gives us 48 minus 18, which is 30. And so now our final answer is x is equal to dx over d, which is 10 over 10, or 1. y is equal to dy over d, which is 20 over 10, which is 2. And finally, z is equal to dz over d, which is 30 over 10, which is 3. So the answer is x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3, which you will remember is exactly the same uh, solution that we arrived at in lecture 2 when we solved that same system of equations using Gaussian elimination. x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3. So that uh, then concludes, uh, well, we, we still need to look at our problems, but at least that concludes our discussion of determinants and Kramer's rule. So now let's um, consider some problems for this lecture. Okay, our two problem, two in class problem or in lecture problems uh, for this lecture will be 3.1. It'll be uh, from your textbook 7.7.21. The second one will be 7.7.23. And then we'll have a third one in class. So that concludes lecture three, and good luck.